The Salita SW200 movement. The Salita SW200 is a Swiss mechanical watch movement that descends directly from the legendary ETA 2824. The ETA 2824 established itself as one of the most widely used and respected movements in watchmaking history, and the SW200 carries that DNA forward. When ETA began restricting movement sales to outside brands, Salita stepped in to fill the gap with the SW200, which is essentially a clone of the 2824 with minor refinements. This means the SW200 shares the same fundamental architecture, the same dimensions, and the same parts layout as movements that have been powering Swiss watches for decades. The Seiko NH35 movement. The Seiko NH35 is a Japanese workhorse movement that powers countless affordable automatic watches. The NH35 comes from Seiko's stable of reliable, mass-produced movements designed for efficiency and dependability. It is not trying to be the SU200. These two movements exist in complete different price brackets, serve different market segments, and embody fundamentally different design philosophies. Comparing them is not exactly fair, but doing so reveals why Swiss movements command premium prices and what you actually get for that extra money. Size and dimensions. The SW200 measures 25.6 millimeters in diameter and sits 4.6 millimeters thick. The NH35 measures 27.4 millimeters in diameter and reaches 5.3 millimeters in thickness. Nearly 2 millimeters wider and 0.7 millimeters thicker might not sound like much until you realize this directly impacts case size. A watch built around an SW200 can have a slimmer profile and a smaller overall footprint, which matters if you prefer prefer elegant proportions or have smaller wrists. The NH35 forces designers to work with a chunkier canvas, which is fine for sport watches but limits versatility in dressier designs. Rotor design and weight. The SW200 rotor, the weighted half-circle component that spins to win the mainspring, features a tapered edge that allows the case to be even thinner where the rotor sits. The NH35 rotor maintains a uniform thickness throughout. This might seem like a minor detail, but in watchmaking, every tenth of a millimeter counts when you are trying to create a svelte dress watch. Weight tells another part of the story. The SW200 weighs approximately 11.4 grams, while the NH35 tips the scales at 13.1 grams. That is 1.7 grams of difference, which your wrist probably will not notice, but it reflects the different materials and construction methods at play. Material quality and components. When you examine both movements closely, material choices reveal different priorities. The NH35 uses plastic components in certain functional areas, particularly in the date change mechanism. That little component that controls how the date wheel advances each day is made from polymer. The SW200 uses metal for this same component. Now, does this affect how well the date changes? Not really. Both movements change the date just fine, but metal components generally offer better long-term durability and resistance to wear. Plastic can become brittle over time or wear down faster under repeated stress. The Swiss approach favors longevity, even in parts the owner will never see. The Japanese approach favors cost efficiency without sacrificing immediate function, which is perfectly reasonable for movements in this price range. Winding feel and tolerance. Wind both movements manually and you will immediately notice a difference in how they feel and sound. The SW200 produces a tighter, more refined clicking sound when you turn the crown. The winding action feels smoother, more controlled. The NH35 feels coarser, with a slightly rougher texture to the winding action. This comes down to manufacturing tolerances, which is the allowable variation in the size and fit of components. The SW200 maintains tighter tolerances across its gears and other moving parts. This means less gap between meshing gears, which translates to that smoother winding sound and feel. Tighter tolerances require more precise manufacturing, better quality control, and more expensive production equipment. The NH35 uses looser tolerances, which makes manufacturing faster and cheaper while still delivering reliable performance. You are not getting better timekeeping from tighter tolerances in the winding train, but you are getting a more premium tactile experience. Date Transition Mechanism The date change function highlights another tolerance difference. On the NH35, the date begins its transition well before midnight, sometimes starting the flip more than an hour early. This leaves a window where the date display sits awkwardly between two numbers, making it difficult to read clearly. On the SW200, the date transition happens much closer to actual midnight, and when it does flip, it snaps over crisply and decisively. This sharper transition reflects tighter tolerances in the date change mechanism and better 
future synchronization between the hour wheel and the date advancing components. Does this matter functionally? Only if you frequently check your watch around midnight and care about precision. But it is another example of Swiss movements prioritizing refinement in details that most people never think about. Balance wheel regulation systems. Flip both movements over to examine the regulation side, and you will see a significant difference in how these movements allow for timing adjustment. The SW200 features a fine tuning mechanism on its balance wheel assembly. This mechanism includes a regulator with a micrometric screw that allows watchmakers to make extremely precise adjustments to the rate of the movement. Small turns of this screw move the regulator pins in tiny increments, which changes how much of the hairspring is active, thereby adjusting how fast or slow the watch runs. This level of precision makes regulation easier and more accurate. The NH35 uses a basic but functional regulator, essentially a lever that you push one way or the other. It works perfectly fine for getting the movement within acceptable timekeeping standards, but it does not offer the same degree of fine control. A skilled watchmaker can regulate either movement to high accuracy, but the S200 makes that job easier and allows for finer adjustments if you want to really dial in the performance. Back plate construction philosophy. The back plate, which covers and protects the gear train on the movement's reverse side, reveals fundamentally different manufacturing philosophies. The NH35 uses a single piece back plate that covers the entire gear train in one go. This design makes assembly straightforward and fast. You align all the gears, drop the plate on top, secure it, and you are done. This speeds up production and reduces the skill level required for assembly, which keeps costs down. The SU200 divides its back plate into multiple multiple sections, with each section corresponding to specific functions and gear groups. You have separate bridges for the barrel bridge, the train wheel bridge, and other components. This modular approach makes servicing significantly easier because a watchmaker can access specific parts of the movement without disassembling everything. Need to service the escapement? Remove just that bridge. The trade-off is that initial assembly takes more time and requires more skill to properly align and secure multiple bridges instead of one plate. Surface finish Finishing quality. Close examination of surface finishing reveals where Swiss movements justify their premium pricing through aesthetic craftsmanship. The S200 displays more refined finishing across its plates and bridges. The grain patterns appear more uniform and consistent. The beveled edges show sharper, cleaner lines. Circular graining, known as perlage, appears more regular and evenly executed. The NH35 shows functional finishing that gets the job done but lacks the same level of refinement. The surfaces appear less uniform uniform, the graining patterns show more variation, and the overall execution feels more utilitarian. Now, most of this finishing is purely aesthetic. A more beautifully finished movement does not keep better time. However, some finishing techniques do serve functional purposes. Fine graining and polishing can help trap microscopic dust particles that inevitably find their way into movements over time, preventing them from interfering with gear operation. But honestly, the main purpose of high quality finishing is to demonstrate craftsmanship and and attention to detail, which appeals to enthusiasts who appreciate traditional watchmaking artistry, manufacturing philosophy differences. These two movements embody completely different approaches to mechanical watchmaking that reflect their respective national industries. Japanese movements like the NH35 prioritize efficient mass production, reliability, and value. Seiko engineered the NH35 for straightforward assembly, easy manufacturing, and consistent performance at a price. Point that makes mechanical watches accessible to everyone. Every design choice, from the single piece back plate to the plastic date components to the looser tolerances, serves the goal of producing a dependable movement economically. There is nothing wrong with this approach. It democratized mechanical watchmaking and proved that you do not need to spend thousands to own a legitimate automatic watch. Swiss movements like the SWB200 prioritize serviceability, longevity, and craftsmanship. The modular bridge design makes repair easier decades down the line. The metal components resist wear better over extended periods. The tighter tolerances and superior finishing reflect a tradition that views watches as heirloom objects meant to last generations. This philosophy costs more to execute, but creates movements that can be maintained and enjoyed for 50 years or longer with proper care.
what the price difference actually buys you. Here is the uncomfortable truth that watch enthusiasts debate endlessly. Most of the differences between the SW200 and NH35 are not functional in terms of timekeeping performance. Both movements, when properly regulated, can achieve similar accuracy. Both will run reliably for years with basic maintenance. Both will survive normal daily wear without issue. The NH35 might actually prove more robust in some situations because its looser tolerances give it more wiggle room when subjected to shocks or impacts. So what does the significantly higher price of a Swiss movement actually get you? You get better tactile feedback when winding. You get a crisper date change closer to midnight. You get easier serviceability down the road. You get superior finishing that most people will never see unless they remove the case back. You get slightly smaller dimensions that allow for slimmer watches. You get the satisfaction of owning something made to higher standards, even if those standards do not translate to measurably better performance. You you get what the watch industry calls quality, which is that intangible combination of refinement, attention to detail, and craftsmanship that exists beyond pure function. Whether that quality justifies the price premium depends entirely on what you value in a watch. The real performance factor. Performance ultimately depends less on whether you chose Swiss or Japanese and more on maintenance and regulation. A poorly maintained SW200 will run worse than a well-maintained NH35 every single time. A properly regulated NH35 35 can easily match or exceed the timekeeping of a poorly regulated SU200. The actual performance of any mechanical movement comes down to regular servicing, which means cleaning, lubricating, and adjusting every three to five years depending on use. It comes down to proper regulation by someone who knows what they are doing. It comes down to how you treat the watch, whether you subject it to major shocks, whether you let it run dry of lubrication. The movement inside matters, but the Care you provide matters more for day-to-day -day performance and longevity. And if the NH35 has you curious about what else Seiko offers in their movement lineup, there is an entire family tree worth exploring.